Good afternoon, my friends. This is uh, Pastor Steve Ensley from Redeemer in Louisville. It's good to be with you today on this first day of June. Uh, five months down already. It seems, well, it doesn't seem like it hardly could be. But here we are at the beginning of summer, almost, and uh, it's a beautiful day in Louisville. The sun's out. It's warm out. Uh, Terry and I had a good uh, Memorial Day weekend, and we're just trying to get ourselves back in, in the groove. So we're here today for our midweek devotion. Let's begin with prayer. O King of glory and Lord of hosts, you are uplifted in triumph far above the heavens. Don't leave us without consolation, but send us the spirit of truth, the spirit that you promised from the Father. For you live and reign with him in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The reading I uh, chose today is the first reading that was assigned for Sunday from Acts 1. Then they returned to Jerusalem from the hill called the Mount of Olives, a Sabbath day walk from the city. And when they arrived, they went upstairs to the room where they were staying. This was just after Jesus had ascended into heaven. Those present were Peter and John and James and Andrew. Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew and Matthew, James, son of Alphaeus, and Simon the Zealot, and Judas, the son of James. They all joined together constantly in prayer, along with the women, and Mary, the mother of Jesus, and his brothers. In those days, Peter stood up among the believers, a group numbering about 120, and said, Brothers, the scripture had to be fulfilled, which the Holy Spirit spoke long ago through the mouth of David concerning Judas, who served as guide for those who arrested Jesus. He was one of our number and shared in this ministry. With the reward he got for his wickedness, Judas bought a field, and there he fell headlong. His body burst open, and all his intestines spilled out. Everyone in Jerusalem heard about this, so they called that field in their language al Kadama, that is, the field of blood. For, Peter said, it is written in the book of Psalms, may his place be deserted, let there be no one to dwell in it, and may another take his place of leadership. Therefore, it is necessary to choose one of the men who have been with us the whole time the Lord Jesus went in and out among us, beginning from John's baptism to the time when Jesus was taken up from us. For one of these must become a witness with us of his resurrection. So they proposed two men, Joseph, called Barsabbas, also known as Justice, and Matthias. And they prayed, Lord, you know everyone's heart, Show us which of these two you have chosen to take over this apostolic ministry, which Judas left to go where he belongs. And then they cast lots. And the lot fell to Matthias. So he was added to the 11 disciples. Jesus' followers had just, just seen him, just witnessed him ascending into heaven. And he had told them to go back to Jerusalem and wait, to wait for the coming of the Holy Spirit. And so they did. They went back. They went back to that same room. And they prayed. And they waited. But Peter believed that there was business that needed to be taken care of immediately, right now. He thinks that the believers should choose a replacement for Judas. And so they chose two men and they prayed and they prayed some more and they cast lots and they ended up with a man called Matthias. Now I don't really see anywhere in scripture where Jesus had told them to do this. I can't really tell whether Peter was doing a good thing or whether he was in too much of a hurry and 
they'd have done better or been better off to wait for 10 days until the Spirit came, until Pentecost. Maybe this was the right thing for them to do. Maybe it was a well-meaning mistake. Scripture doesn't tell us anything about what happened to Matthias after this. It's a total mystery. And that's the way it often is in our lives as Christians, as followers of Jesus, isn't it? We pray, we think about, and we make decisions, and we pray and hope that God is guiding us, but, well, but we rarely have an angel that comes and tells us that we're doing the right thing or not. We ask the Holy Spirit to help us. And if we do make mistakes, if we do make errors, if we do misjudge, we trust that he will use even our mistakes to God's glory. See, following Jesus is not an exact science. It's more like sheep listening for their shepherd's voice. Sheep trusting their shepherd to lead them. Knowing that if they make a mistake, he will bring them back again. And after all, what better shepherd could we have than one who laid down his life for us? one who laid down his life for the flock that he loves and cherishes. The one who lives and reigns forever and will watch over us and guide us until, he prom till as he promised, he will bring us safely home to himself, to heaven. Let's pray. Lord, Oftentimes in our lives, we're not sure what to do. We hem and we haw, we pray, we trust, we think. Lord, we just ask that you would guide us and that you would lead us as our shepherd. In Jesus' name, amen. The song I've chosen today is called Sweet Hour of Prayer. It may be a little bit unfamiliar to some of us, but uh, it's a very good song, I believe, that uh, pertains today. Sweet hour of prayer, sweet hour of prayer, that calls me from a world of care, and bids me at my Father's throne, make all my wants and wishes known. In seasons of distress and grief, my soul has often found relief, and oft escaped the tempter's snare, by thy return, sweet hour of prayer. Sweet hour of prayer, sweet hour of prayer, thy wings shall my petition bear to him whose truth and faithfulness Engage the waiting soul to bless. And since he bids me seek his face, Believe his word and trust his grace, I'll cast on him my every care, and wait for thee, sweet hour of prayer. Psalm 97 The Lord reigns. Let the earth rejoice. Let the multitude of isles be glad. Clouds and darkness surround the Lord. Righteousness and justice are the foundation of God's throne. 
Fire goes before the Lord, burning up enemies on every side. Lightnings light up the world. The earth sees and trembles. The mountains melt like wax before the Lord of all the earth. The heavens declare your righteousness, O Lord, and all the peoples see your glory. Confounded be all who worship carved images and delight in false gods. Bow down before the Lord, all you gods. Zion hears and is glad, and the cities of Judah rejoice because of your judgments, O Lord. For you are the Lord, most high over all the earth. You are exalted far above all gods. You who love the Lord hate evil. God guards the lives of the saints and rescues them from the hand of the wicked. Light dawns for the righteous and joy for the honest of heart. Rejoice in the Lord, you righteous, and give thanks to God's holy name. We pray. Heavenly Father, as your son Jesus prayed, grant us the unity you have with him. Grant that that unity may be apparent in how we work together and how we proclaim your name and how we love the world until we join you and Jesus in glory through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And now, my friends, may the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be and abide with you always. Amen. I look forward to seeing you on Sunday for our birthday celebration, the day of Pentecost, where we celebrate the birthday of the New Testament Church and the gift of the Holy Spirit. I hope to see you either here in our sanctuary or with us right here online. God bless your day. Goodbye.